Welcome to another episode of Listen to Us Rant About Movies. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and we drink while we do it. For this episode, we'll be discussing the latest films and shows we've been watching since our last episode, followed by a double rant review of John Woo's Manhunt and the new film by Jason Reitman and Diablo Cody, Tully. Tonight, I'm drinking two beers, actually, because Zach, I'm, I'm filling in for you. Yeah, oh, yeah, doing double duty, man. <laughs> yeah, Zach's not feeling too well today, so um, I'm, uh, I've got two picked out. And if you've seen Tully, the one of the movies we're going to be talking about, you'll get these references. I am drinking, the first one is going to be, a, uh, it's called Milk Stout by Left Hand Brewing. Nice, nice. That's a good one. I've had that. Appropriate. Yeah. And um, after that, I'm going to try uh, the 72 Pale Ale by First Magnitude. And it has like nice. a little mermaid on, on the can. Hell yeah. So kind of appropriate as well. I'm drinking um, water, which was in um, Manhunt when they're on the jet skis. <laughs> yeah. And um, I... I believe they also drank water in Tully, but I'm not entirely sure. That's pretty rare, man. I, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of milk. I, I honestly can't recall if someone just drank water, but <laughs> it rained in the movie, and it's raining here, so that's how I'm tying it into that one. <laughs> that's great. That's just perfect. <laughs> oh. How is so, it? Trying the milk stout. It's really good, man. Mm. Nice and smooth. You love the stouts, right? Yeah, I do. I do like the left hand. It's very nice. Left hand's good. I haven't haven't had their milk stout before, but yeah, it's really mm. smooth. Got a nice creaminess to it. Oh um, yeah. Not not too heavy. It's a good boy. Definitely a good boy. Um, so yeah, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M. You can choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. If you like what you hear on this episode, remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Now we're going to get to our watch lists. Zach, what is first on your list? All right. Well, I've watched a couple things. Um, I guess uh, start with something that I know you saw, we talked about, but uh, finally got around to watching um, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Uh, finally, dude. Come on. Yeah, man. It took me a long time to come around on this one. I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking. Um yeah, it just needed to be viewed, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. pretty pressing. I mean, it's a, it's a sequel to a classic, right? Yeah, definitely. And it totally, a timeless classic. <laughs> and it totally lives up to its predecessor, right? Oh, yeah, right? and it's definitely not a big poo-poo stinky. Definitely <laughs> not. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty brutal. It's pretty uh, rough, right? Yeah. And it, parts of it, though, I feel like it's just like, why the hell is this movie called Jumanji? It just makes no sense. I know. It's the worst. If it was a different movie, maybe they could have made it fun with some of the ideas. But, like, I, I thought it was fun how the characters were, like, video game characters. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. they like, dipped their toe into playing with, like, a reality of, like, being in a video game. Sure. But it just does not know go far enough. You know what I mean in that realm, because other than that, it's just like a fully real world. It's like, what if there are like invisible walls or you know, like weird things like that? But, yeah, they they totally could have like taken it a little further. Well, actually, a lot further because it's really just yeah. level or uh, top level ideas. Yeah, and then it just, it's just like, like progressing through levels and the people being like programs. It's basically yeah. it. It's like a stupid person's idea of like what people would be like in a video game <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> yeah totally it had some but, good jokes though like, yeah I feel like because it had some good laughs but yeah you know. because there is like the idea inherently i feel like had some value especially in some of the stuff with the characters like it seems like a really basic idea but just the fact that like their characters so these actors are like playing kids in the act, looking like themselves is like an interesting thing you know yeah. what i mean yeah totally. but it's just not, and like it, it gives some laughs in the movie, but it's just not like enough 
to like justify it the no. concept of that you know it's not it, it the ending is kind of it's really disappointing too like near the end yeah. it's just like oh just come brutal on and yeah. what what the fuck is bobby cavanaugh or whoever doing as the villain in this movie like what the <laughs> hell is going on with that because is he supposed Seriously. to be the villain from the first one like the same guy because he has the same name right um honestly i don't really remember I don't somewhat really remember i was watching it with my friend john and he said that it was the same name as the guy from the first one which was like what oh really or at least their name is van pelt which is like maybe it's like a same relation or i don't know but it just didn't make any sense, and it's like, okay, this guy, if it's the same guy, then, like, he's older in the one that takes place before, and it's the same universe, and now he's young, but there's also, like, it's the same universe, but that callback to the original one was so brutal with the uh, etching. Yeah. But it's like, what's that? And it's like, oh, it's uh, the character from the other movie. He was here. And then they go, <laughs> oh, okay, and it just says blank was here, and then he goes, all right. Yeah. Anyway, that's <laughs> just like what? <laughs> like, man, really paying tribute. I saw something but when it came out. It's like paying tribute to Ro- Robin Williams. It's like, oh yeah, what a tribute. Just pointing out that his name's on like a piece of wood and this like, like you know. a piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah, and also it's like, okay, so he was there when Robin Williams was in the in the game. Did everyone talk and only say one word or like one phrase? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it, was it a computer uh, video game then? inside doesn't make any sense doesn't make any any sense at all <laughs> but, uh, yeah yeah it's pretty rough it's pretty not rough. that like i'm turning to jumanji welcome to the jungle for like accurate world building in <laughs> a film but you know what i mean it's yeah. just it's like i don't know this is like the most boneheaded stupid shit but also i watched it knowing it was gonna be so shame on me i guess <laughs> totally i mean you, you, you go to see it for like what it is but honestly like i kind of wanted to see it because it does have the title Jumanji. Like, you know, I, I like the yeah. original growing up and everything. I yeah. want to see how it tied in. And the beginning's interesting. How it, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I say that very lightheartedly. But, you know, it's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's cool having that connection a little bit. And seeing, like, the board game again. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just could have been so much cooler, in my opinion. Yeah. It just feels like something... Not saying that this did happen, but something with, like, the new Cloverfield movies... Where they, like, get a script and they're like, hey, this is a script that would be good as a movie. Let's find a property that we can make this, you right. know what I mean? It's like, oh, this could be a Cloverfield movie. Where it's like, hmm, characters, interactive game. It could be Jumanji too, guys. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> We have the rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It felt very much like that. Where it's like, this does not... In no. in no way is this a Jumanji movie. It's a completely it just, different movie that just has the yeah, same title. It's really weird. And then they yeah. loosely connect it, and it's like, eh. How about that part with uh, Dwayne Johnson going over the cliff there at the end? That, oh, with yeah. The, with the motorcycle. How rough is that? <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> and isn't there, like, a weird guitar thing, and they're, like, hands are each, and like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I thought Reese Darby was funny. Which one's the that? Guy, he's the guy, the guy from Flight of the Concords. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was I, good. I just like him. He's good. Yeah, no, I do. I like him, too. Um, he's great and everything, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. But then also Nick Jonas is in it, or one of the Jonases. Is it yeah. Nick Jonas? It's Nick Jonas. It's like, ugh, brutal. Yeah. And How brutal that, is is also the, or what were you going to say? Well, just that his whole story and how he's, like, trapped in the game, and then he yeah. comes out, and he's like... And then he's calling Hank, <laughs> 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 ending it's like the movie got so rough because like for the first 30 minutes i was like okay this could be like i'm not loving this but this could be like a fun movie for kids i i can see this sure being fun sure and then at the end it's just like colin hanks like wow this is rad guys <laughs> or something like that is it colin hanks in a metallica shirt <laughs> oh just just fucked honestly uh, just fucked uh so absolutely rough. brutal yeah so yeah, anyways, glad you caught that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um I saw something on the complete opposite spectrum of uh-huh. good and bad. I finished Mosaic. Oh yeah. Yeah. What'd you think? 
finish it, boy. Um, I liked it a lot, man. It was. It's really good. It's really. It's good, good right? Um, yeah, I, I definitely think like it's not perfect. You know, I yeah, think like I mean, it's definitely not perfect. Yeah, some of the acting's a little rough, but um, mm. the overall concept is is interesting. Um, and it's it's really weird how um, the director is just like getting into very like um, daytime television with his with this with his plots. Uh uh-huh. like the plots of his his recent stuff seems very like daytime, like lifetime movie almost but the best version of that like kind of plot. yeah you know what i mean i guess i can see it i guess i can see some of mosaic being like that mosaic is kind of like that and i heard a lot of his previous film uh the one i didn't see uh um, insane insane was a lot like that mm. too very much like yeah that goes a little it goes a little farther but i guess on i can see on paper like handed to a different filmmaker, same synopsis being like that could be a result of that. Yeah, you gotta see what you're saying. Yeah, when I say for people who don't know the, the filmmaker, I'm talking about Steven Soderbergh. Little Stevie, um, good old Stevie. Um, and I didn't even think it was particularly like shot very interesting, like a very interesting. Oh, really? Ways. Yeah, like I thought it, it looked couple, really nice. It looked nice. It had a couple good shots, but it it was pretty straightforward. And there was, like, one scene, it was at night, where the lighting was kind of rough. But that being said, I, I, I respect what he was going for. And I, I understand, too, like, the whole intention of this was to be an experiment for his app. Like, the experimental yeah. kind of, like, choose-your-own-adventure app. Mm-hmm. And that's what this whole thing was all about. And in that respect, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty definitely. cool and i like how he's just becoming so experimental with like the format and just like film in general you know mm-hmm. yeah um, he's just, just he's just playing around he's dabbling in all kinds of uh experimentation definitely which is interesting. it's nice yeah it's but doing cool. it in, doing it in like very accessible ways and very yeah. watchable ways definitely um but other than that i really don't have any other complaints like it's pretty solid like all his stuff it's just it's good, you know. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Headland was great as well, and I yeah, really he's en- really good in it. Really enjoyed his performance. Um, great cast all over. Sharon Stone was great. Um, uh, dude, there's just so many different people. Um, I can't even think of anyone else right now. But um, yeah, great cast. There's um, what's his uh. He's in Nebraska, and he's uh, Buzz in Home Alone. Yes, as yeah. the cop, loved yeah. him. Uh, Devin Rattray. He's great. You just know him as Buzz. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that's who I meant. Like, hit some of his acting was not great. Oh, really? I thought he was really good. You think so? Yeah. He definitely had some moments, but there were a couple where I was like, "Oh man, he's overacting or whatever," but. I, like I just his, like, I like that his character, he's, though. Yeah, I like that he's the cop in this like show. You know what I mean? And he's like the leader too. He's like the leader yeah, it's detective. Like, and I... Totally. I just thought that was interesting, and his like relationship with his wife and stuff, like the yeah. scene where he freaks out, being really effective. Yeah. No, that w- that was good. That was a good moment. I also like how much they talk about um, the Hobbit desolation of Smog. In it. Yeah, so good. <laughs> it's hysterical. So good. And that, yeah. that's like a focal point of like yeah. the murder. Because it's like what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot about desolation of Smog. It's pretty funny. Yeah. And with um, Logan Lucky, like it just seems Soderbergh loves these like pop culture references, especially mm-hmm. to like other films. He yeah. talks about Game of Thrones and, and Logan Lucky. <laughs> yeah, totally. Talks about, uh, yeah, The Hobbit in this one. It's good. It's funny. But, um, yeah, it was cool that HBO picked it up, turned it into, like, a just, like, a regular show. Mm-hmm. It was cool to get through. It was only six episodes. Each one's an hour long. And um, if you're interested in uh, Soderbergh and him experimenting with, like, format, I, it's worth checking out for sure. Definitely. And um, overall, overall, pretty excellent show. 
I, I sound like I wasn't that into it, but I totally was. No, no, it's it's <laughs> it's good. I, I get you. It's yeah. not. It's no Nick, but it's no. It's Nick. really good. It's nowhere near the Nick at all. But yeah, yeah I enjoy it. Um, I'm just. I I speak more critically of Soderbergh because you expect a lot from him. Yeah, you know? definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I respect them. So, anyways, yeah, that was uh, Mosaic. It's on HBO. Easy uh, watch. Yeah. What else you got? Um, let's see here. I've been continuing the Miyazaki deep dive. Um, nice. Trying to slam all his movies. So I did a little Princess Mononoke rewatch, and it is um, just killer. Just a killer movie. I think you talked about that one in the last cast. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I... Uh, but it's still great. <laughs> yeah. And then I also watched um, Castle in the Sky, which I hadn't seen before. I haven't seen that one either. It is amazing. It's so good. You gotta check it. That's another super, one of his films? Yeah, super fun. Very watchable. It's one of his earlier ones. It's like mid-80s. Okay. Um. Really good. Great, like, character design and, like, design of the the world and really fun characters and stays, the pacing is great. So much interesting stuff happening. It's pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm really vibing on this uh, this dive that I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to keep it going, you know what I mean? Until keep I've it going, it man. Yeah, it's just like. They're all great. Know, like, does he make all a great. bad movie? I mean, come on. Yeah, I just, uh, just one of those things where every time I watch one, I'm like, why haven't I fucking seen this? I've known yeah. about them for so long and just not watched them. Like, what what the hell's going on here? Yeah, dude, it took me forever to watch any of his movies. I don't know why. But I've, yeah, I've started I'd to seen, watch them, too. Yeah, I had just seen, like, Spirited Away and Ponyo and Princess Mononoke, pretty much. Yeah. So then I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and then seen them years ago. You know what I mean? I just never right. watch more. Just yeah. constantly kicking myself. And because you started rewatch, like you started watching all those, I mm. that's the reason I started getting into them. I I bought like four of his movies. And, nice. And what else did them. you get? Uh, I got I bought Princess Minoke, Watched mm. that. Bought um, bought um, Spirited Away. Watched that recently. Nice, nice. Um, my neighbor Totoro. Nice. Um, maybe only got three. Those are the only ones I can remember right now. I feel like there's another one, but I don't remember. Yeah, they they just put out those new versions or whatever. Yeah. I'm so I've seen right. them around. So I like pick one up and then go like go home and watch it immediately. And then like the <laughs> next day, I was like, Yeah, hey, I'm gonna go get another one. Watch it. <laughs> like, yeah. One I really want to watch. I know you've seen uh, and it was on your top ten. Uh, was it maybe two years ago? But um, Red Turtle. Oh yeah, it's amazing. I want to see it real bad. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, it looks awesome. The old Studio Ghibli. It's fucking so killing good. it. Killing it. Yeah, man. I um I did a rewatch. Speaking of buying Blu-rays, I bought this on 4K. Mm. Phantom Thread. Oh, yeah. Dude. Looks good? Yeah. I don't taste, have... Taste and looks incredible. Um, <sighs> film's a fucking masterpiece. It's so good. It's I'm a very excited to watch it again. Masterpiece. I love rewatching it. Um, I was just—it's just that moment when it, it first starts, and you're just like, "This movie's fucking amazing." It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's really, yeah. really good. And it was really cool to rewatch. No, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but knowing the ending, mm-hmm. and knowing that, yeah, being able see, to, yeah, just see that play out mm-hmm. was really cool too. And, Hell yeah. Uh, totally it's a it's a cool experience just the second watch you know there's the first mm. watch then it's a different experience the second watch and I'm it looks dying inc- to fucking watch that thing again looks incredible in 4k dying. man yeah yeah real tasty Shit. i still yeah. want to check out the the special features which are on there too mm. there are there aren't good a good amount not a lot there's not a does, lot does he have one of those weird edited um deleted scene things like that was on the master uh, there's some I I don't honestly don't remember hair what's on there. Too. There's like a some weird kind of, short. Cut yeah, of. there's some kind of deleted scene thing. There's like one feature on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot. But I definitely want to check them out. 
I and saw that Go photo ahead. you posted, and it looks like it's in a nice little uh, package there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the package is great, dude. Um, it's interesting because the 4K has, you know, all the 4Ks now, they're like a black yeah. c- case. Mm-hmm. This one's clear, and it's thicker. It's like a, it's like a, almost like, like a, a criterion. DB. It's like a criterion, exactly. It's like a criterion uh. case. Yeah, clear. Um, and the inside, uh, the discs, instead of like, there's like a picture on the left side. Uh-huh of like the inside of the dress yeah with like a phrase sewn in and on the on the right side are both discs kind of like on one side kind of one you're, ma- you're just in. making me so hard right now I, <laughs> I gotta get this fucking thing dude i can't believe you don't have it i'm broke man i would have it oh, i would have gone and picked that shit up day one i just don't have the money to get it yeah i pre-ordered it, it all on synthesizers ago. when yeah. i like first announced that i pre-ordered it um mm-hmm. but yeah definitely definitely worth picking up yeah it's so definitely good. going to yeah. the day that i get any money <laughs> <laughs> and that score is so good johnny yeah, green i want to get that vinyl too yeah I dude, that you should. Came out recently yeah. i want that too it's amazing oh, i gotta check that shit but, I yeah I, I i think it's honestly probably one of my favorite uh pt anderson films yeah it, it's it, honestly, it's one of my favorite films, <laughs> like in general, right now. Like it's, it's in my top ten favorite films of all time. It's oh shit, bold claim. It's so good, dude. It's so fucking good. It's fucking amazing. It, I really think it's a masterpiece, and I mean that not in the sense that it's flawless, perfect movie. I mean like yeah, it's it's a piece by a master. It is a masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> Just like done by a master, it's amazing, yeah. and several masters. You got mm-hmm. P.T. Anderson, and then the acting talent is so good. Hell it, yeah! I, I can't, I can't say anything more highly about it. It's just, if you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. It's so good. Mm-hmm. I gotta but, check it. Yeah. <laughs> I got one more thing that I've watched, but you go ahead on your next. Um. Oh, I saw First Reformed. There it is. Uh, this is what yeah, I want to hear baby. about, boy. How oh is man, it? it's really good. It's amazing. Paul Schrader, best thing he's done in a really long time. Oh man. Uh, really reserved. Um, to the point where I mean, it gets pretty crazy, but like, I I wasn't thinking it was gonna go there, and then I was like, oh, it's a Paul Schrader movie. Of course, there's gonna be some fucking. You know, go, go some weird things gonna happen yeah. at the end or some escalation. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, just really reserved. Amazing cinematography, really good performances. And I, I hadn't watched the trailer or anything for it. Um, yeah. So I had literally no idea what it was about. I just like purposely wow. like didn't read anything or so. I was like, okay, it's this priest movie, Ethan Hawke, all right. <laughs> and uh, very pleasantly surprised. Um, Did you even know it was 4 by 3 when you went into it? No, I didn't. Oh, wow, so that was kind of shocking. Yeah, I knew that Ethan Hawke was in it. <laughs> That's, yeah, it. That's it. <laughs> um, Cedric the Entertainer is really good in it, and it's really nice to see <laughs> him in something that yeah. he's like oh, doing you know, just a role. Um, not being like super goofy. I mean, he's kind of funny in it, but yeah, uh, it's good to see him in a more dramatic movie. Um, it's cool. But yeah, it is a uh, pretty fucking killer, and um, you should check it out immediately when it comes out. It's I, one of the I, best things I've seen this year, I would say. Amazing! I I can't wait to see it. It's coming out later this month, and I'll definitely be catching it. So yeah, man, it's can't great. Wait. I don't want to say too much because not knowing yeah. anything was so nice, you know, that... Yeah, I don't want to hear too much. Um, I have seen the trailer. It played before some movie I saw recently. It was... Uh, I think... Yeah, I don't remember. But anyway, um, I have seen the trailer, but I'm not going to rewatch it again. I'm not going to read up anything because you said mm-hmm. it's, it's better to kind of go on more blind, so... Totally. I don't want to know any anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a killer flick. You'll catch it. Yeah. Nice man, first reformed, and you saw the Q and A with the with Paul Schrader, yeah. right? Yeah. How was that? It was good. People sort of, 
asked goofy questions, but he gave pretty good answers. <laughs> but nice. it, yeah, it was interesting him just like talking about like I didn't know what kind of ending this was gonna have, and like could have had this ending and that and this, and th- the ending does kind of feel like there was like a variety of options, and they just kind of like picked one, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, it took a second to sit with me to be satisfied with the ending because it was very clearly a five banger until then but it was like no nah, it's uh, still a fucking five banger <laughs> like, okay all right we'll see but then. um yeah it was good he, he's a uh, interesting person to hear talk yeah that's cool man oh, man that's what's so great about chicago you get all those q a's at the music yeah, box fucking mm-hmm. incredible yeah the box is the greatest it's great um cool man yeah so i can't wait to see that uh last thing that i'll talk about is talked about it before but i continued watching more episodes of ugly delicious on netflix Mm -hmm. nice it's kind of just like a good filler show like uh you know sitting down with emily hey what do we watch the only thing about this show and i love and hate it for this reason it makes hungry. me so hungry. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> I food, want that. Yeah, like, the, food's am- like, the food just makes you so hungry. It's incredible. There's an episode about pizza, tacos, uh, fried chicken, barbecue, like all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and the two most recent episodes I watched uh, had a very similar theme. One was about fried chicken and one was about uh, fried rice. And both kind of mostly dealt with uh, some of the like the possible ties to racism that could have yeah and what that means like living in America and like some of the prejudices you think of that are tied <coughs> with those foods mm-hmm. and um, but also kind of an appreciation for them obviously and great places that they ate and enjoy just like these different types of um, both Chinese food and just like soul food Mm-hmm. and um, what that means in today's society. So that's interesting. And, yeah. Um, we're checking out. And I got to say, with this show and some others I've been watching just in general, I just, I've, I've, I've developed this fondness for for food, almost like a hobby. Like, yeah. I've always just, like, eaten. You know, I like food, like anyone yeah. does. But now I, I actually appreciate food, like, trying to find good restaurants and that's one thing that orlando has is we have so many restaurants and there's still Mm -hmm. so many restaurants i haven't even been to but that's one great thing about this city is there's so much incredible food here and um the show kind of helps me appreciate those things even if it's simple street food just finding those great places those hole in the wall places that are just like amazing so Mm -hmm. um yeah, big uh, big lover of food over here now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So, that's Ugly Delicious. It's on Netflix. Check it out. You good on yours? You you, you want to talk about anything else, or are you good? Mm. I guess I could say really quick that I finally finished the uh, Female Prisoner Scorpion series. Ah, uh, you Just finished b- it. Buttoned that up, Yeah. It was really, it was hard to put down. You know what I mean? It's just been so long. I was just, like, looking at my shelf, like, all right, I got to fucking finish this. Finish but this. it was good, yeah. The fourth one isn't as good as the others. I think the se- the first two are better than the second two. But, you know, still fun. Still good sequences. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Not much to say about that, though. It's called uh, Female Prisoner Scorpion 701's Grudge Song. <laughs> so- <laughs> Did it have, like, a... Crazy conclusion? Did it, um, like, end uh, nicely? More, yeah, it ended nicely. It didn't... I thought it was going to be, like, a big crazy thing, but they kind of went for the more intimate sort of, like, showdown, yeah. which I guess makes sense. But, um, yeah, it was gotcha. cool. It's, there's a lot of cool just, like, techniques in them. I feel like this one had the, the least... It was, like, the least stylistically inventive out of them. Hmm. Um... But yeah, there's cool stuff where they're like, you know, build something on a set with like a huge matte painting background and like weird um, sort of like surreal things happen. And I don't know. It's weird. But cool. Cool. Yeah. Pretty good. All right, man. Good stuff. So that's our watch list. 
we're going to move in, into our review of Manhunt, the new film by John Woo. Yeah, so this is this will be a spoiler-filled review of Manhunt. Uh, so yeah, if you don't want to be spoiled, you can skip this segment and hopefully come back and listen to it. This is a film on Netflix that was released, and um, new film by John Woo. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy. We've talked about this before, but this is just another film that you know sort of just. Hey, it's there in your it's in your queue, you know. Yeah, it's just, I did not know it there's existed. Just, there's just films that are like on the Netflix queue. <laughs> yeah, big films. Hey, we got like, John Woo to make a new movie. There yeah. you go. Here it is. Watch it right now. <laughs> yeah, John Woo movie. Here it is. It's like if we didn't hear, if we didn't follow film, you know, outside of our, you know, on the internet and everything. Yeah. Uh, dude, I wouldn't even know about these things. Totally. You know? It's just crazy, mm-hmm. but it's just the state of the film industry right now, and. Yeah, but anyways, this is, um, yeah, the new film by John Woo, and yeah, what'd you think? I thought it was goofy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely I, goofy. Yeah, and at times, um, that was great, and it played to its strengths, and at times it was, like, a little much. Um, yeah. Something that starts is a very simple concept but done in, like, an unnecessarily complex, stylistic way, I feel like eventually becomes just unnecessarily complex oh, in a yeah. narrative sense. Oh, where yeah. I was honestly, like, loving it for the first hour. It's like, <laughs> this is amazing, <laughs> you know? And then yeah. the, the last, like, 30, 40 was like, all right, this is getting pretty outrageous. Yeah. Like, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I also I hadn't I haven't read up on the movie at all, but I was talking to Sean about it, and he said that it, is it like a self aware parody? Do you know? I, I don't. So he know said if it he thought it was. Uh, I've I've read some things, and I I think it's not in some ways yes because John Woo has he sort of knows he's it's just sort of like him coming yeah. back to his form, you know, like yeah, him yeah. to his original form and. Supposedly there's some lines in there. I haven't seen all, all his movies, or actually I haven't mm-hmm. seen a lot of his movies, but I know that there's some references to like other films where they like straight up rip lines out of there, and it's like yeah. sort of John Woo playing with himself, kind of like making a mm-hmm. joke on himself, and like just having fun with it. Yeah, which makes it come across a little better. Yeah. Even though I still, either way, thought it was fun. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I totally. just I just didn't catch those references when I was watching it. I haven't seen Same. any of his like older things for a long time, so yeah, yeah. I was also so... kind of out of it because I was sick when I watched it. So it was like a it was like a sneezy couch watch. Like yeah, in blankets, I gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good movie. But you know what? I I in the end I had a lot of fun watching it. Like yeah. that being said, like I actually I had a good time. And um, mm-hmm. it's very silly, way over the top. Way over um, the top. But that has its own charm, you know? And, yeah. And, and the fact that it's done on purpose is makes it more enjoyable, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, there, it, it had some moments that were, I was like literally going back and forth. Like, there was a scene that was like, great. There was like a great action piece followed by a terrible scene and then followed by another (laughs) great piece you know like so Uh, it was like you have this mixture of like really good and just like really terrible scenes back to back but but then there's also uh, these scenes that are like not necessarily terrible but just like what was that like right i like i don't even remember where it is in the movie but he like goes walks through like a market or something and it's playing this like sax music and it's like yeah. cut super weird, and there's like a million dissolves over everything, and then it ends on like a smiling man's face freeze frame and like dissolve <laughs> yeah. out. And it was just like, <laughs> what was that scene? I don't and know. Editing. I liked it. <laughs> like, what is going yeah. on? You know, 
is super yeah. weird. Uh, he, he, I gotta tell you though, I'm not, I'm not a fan of his, uh, post his post production, uh, yeah. slowdown scenes. Like, yeah, the slowdown like shots are pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, there's feel- some that he shoots for that, like the high frame rate yeah. slowdowns. But then there's the ones you can tell are jumpy because it was slowed down in post mm-hmm. and it looks just fucking terrible. Yeah, I do think even though I'm not like the biggest fan of that technique, I do think that's something that like done in some of his older stuff plays better. Yeah, like I mean that's kind even of though I'm still thing. yeah not like super crazy about it. So like it makes sense that it would be done, but it just comes across. It just on it doesn't look as good with yeah. like digital. It's just like with something digital. that like on paper makes sense, but like is kind of icky now. Yeah, it's in just terms sort of, of like the way it like actually like feels to watch. Yeah, it's just sort of kind of old school editing. You know, it's mm. not. It's just yeah, it's very much kind of in the past of using that technique and definitely doesn't just like hold up to today's technology you know yeah. it just it looks bad but like i said there's there's some that he shot on purpose high frame rate slow motion that yeah. stuff looks good yeah. which you should do but then the forced mm-hmm. some of the force you could tell it's like trying to like fit what he thought like in the editing room like this is what it should be yeah and it feels very edited and mm-hmm. not great yeah, like that technique, I feel like used used sparingly can be effective, but used when it's just like a scene of someone walking and there's like eight shots of them walking from all these crazy <laughs> angles. And yeah. then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which like sometimes is makes it like cheeky and fun, and sometimes it's just like, all right, this is gross. <laughs> like, yeah. This just looks gross. Yeah. But yeah, like it, it's it had some great action though too. You know, like yeah. some of those some of those pistol battles. Mm-hmm. Great, like it was a lot of fun. Like when they're, um, when they're like have the handcuffs together and they're sort of like forced to fight together. Yeah. That's a lot of fun too. Totally. Like both holding the pistol. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's just go back to that first scene. I love that first scene. It is hysterical. <laughs> it just lets you know so much the type of movie you're about to watch. Yep. Totally. It is so funny. Them just pulling out the pistols and just shooting everyone. <laughs> Look. Yeah. And then it gets into way too much plot. Like, it just has too much oh, plot yeah. with, like... Way too much. The stereotypical, like, evil pharmaceutical company, mm-hmm. you know? And just the assassins are taking the drugs and... Yeah, it's just uh, like, all right. the end, it's like, all okay. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and supposedly, there's that one scene, too, talking about his, like, staples is um, Dove's. Like he oh dove. yeah, yeah where know. they hit the dove pen or whatever. Yeah, like, <laughs> like there's just like a up. random ton of cages of of, of doves, and mm-hmm. then there's literally a scene where the the doves are flying everywhere, and a dove literally intercepts in front of them. You know, like literally <laughs> yeah. kind of goes between them. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Which is it's so like it definitely good. makes sense that this is a self aware thing because like it yeah. almost it, it kind of it feels like it like. And then the poster is just a dove. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's this really dramatic funny. Shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. I think my favorite part was maybe the jet skis though. Just they just them running and yeah. they get to a dock and then just get on jet skis. I was like, Yes <laughs> <laughs> You know, like this is goofy as fuck. It's so goofy. Yeah. Oh man. The uh the speaking of the poster, like the cover on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Terrible, oh yeah, it's man. just an explosion with like impact font, right? Yeah, impact font. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like Manhunt directed by John Woo, just really big. <laughs> yeah, it's hysterical. Which, and going back to what I said before, it's just like a random connection here, but with um with Mosaic, they use impact uh-huh. font on there for the text. Oh yeah. And so I just like saw it to me it was like two things back to back with impact font and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like why is there this impact revival? Stop, this is don't no use good. impact. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like the, that's the the title font of Manhunt is impact. Yeah. <laughs> it's really like, oh, goofy. God. <laughs> is it actually in the movie? Yeah. I think I so. Don't remember. It, like this is the very beginning. Mhm. Yeah. That's really funny. 
But yeah, it is just like such an outrageous movie. Some really great scenes. I really liked um, him when he escapes like the first time and he's like walking through public before he goes down to the subway. Yeah. And there, there's like the two eyes that fade in. And there's yeah. just a bunch of random eyes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that weird was really eye weird. collage. Yeah. yeah. It was like an eye collage. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's just strange shit. It's pretty funny. It was cool, though. It reminded me of, like, the Metropolis thing. Yeah. Metropolis? Like, is it, there's a sequence in Metropolis where they, like, met a bunch of uh, eyes. I don't remember. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say other than it's, like... It's very silly. It's enjoyable. It's totally yeah. like a good movie to like with a group of people, I would think. I oh, watch yeah, it by totally. myself and you uh-huh. too, but have a couple beers, watch it with some friends late late at night. Yeah, totally. Pretty good for it, that. It would be fun. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. Any other thoughts? Um not really like the amount of saxophone and like <laughs> late lounge score in it. That was yeah. good. A lot of lounge score. <laughs> yeah, I was all about that. Um, yeah. Very Other cheesy. than that, just super goofy and enjoyable, but yeah. way too overcomplicated for its own good. For sure. Mm. Yeah, I don't really have much else to add, but um, yeah, what would you rate it? Hmm, it's a tough one. I have an, I have one for you. What, what what I'm gonna rate it? Um, I'm giving it I'm giving it two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. I'm a hard three, maybe a light three and a half. I'm flirting with the three and a half. Oh, flirting with the three and a half. Hey, do what you feel, man. I'll give it the three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going light three and a half. All right, cool. Just because it's I I had a big grin Just on my face. Just because you had fun. Yeah. You had totally. fun. Like the experience trumps the. Mm-hmm. The, the, the actual filmmaking itself. Yeah. Which it. <laughs> which at times is incredible. <laughs> like like Honestly, certain sequences I, it has I some love. Moments of brilliance. Yeah. And even though they were like silly, like the like the weird freeze frames on people's faces. And isn't there's there some like dialogue scene where it starts and it's just a normal dialogue scene, and then halfway through it just becomes like stills of them for no yeah. reason. And then like, it's very like strange. stuff like that is it's just so weird, and it's like you don't ever see that ever, so it's kind of fun to see, yeah. you know. Totally. Appreciate it for that reason. Um for a movie that I don't consider very good, I yeah. like I said, I had a lot of fun watching it, and it actually does have some great action. Like mm-hmm. it has some great action scenes, and it's, oh, and they're all like unique too, and they just like, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Like with with the pistol dueling, and and that's like you know that's what he started, and he it's sort yeah of totally coming back to his original kind of form, and I think I don't think it's him either. I also don't think it's him like saying oh this is what worked for me, so I'm gonna do this. It's sort of like yeah him kind of reconciling with his own past and being like this was mm-hmm. fun i want to do this again sort of yeah thing. totally you know, not like oh this is what works so i have to do this for my next yeah year. Mm-hmm. he just like enjoyed harkening it back he just wanted to do it again yeah yeah so um yeah that is manhunt it is on netflix right now check it out the new film by john Wu. we're gonna go into our non-spoiler section for Tully starting right now. No, no, no! Do you know what a night nanny is? They take care of the baby at night so mom and dad can get some sleep. I don't want a stranger in my house. It's like a Lifetime movie where the nanny tries to kill the family and the mom survives and she has to walk with a cane at the end. Get over yourself. (laughs) Mom, what's wrong with your body? Hello. 
Riley. I'm here to take care of you. I'm just not used to people doing things for me. I hold a baby all day, and then nighttime rolls around, and I'm supposed to just switch gears. Like, hello, I'm all sexy now. That was me cracking open the beer of my first magnitude, 72 pale ale. Drinking this for Tully. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. So this will be just a short... This will be very short of our non-spoiler review for this movie just because it's really hard to talk about this film without spoilers. So... Mm -hmm. Just surprising. Yeah, exactly. Very surprising. So we both watched this film hours ago. (laughs) Yeah, like I got out of it two hours ago. Yeah, so it's very fresh for uh, Mm -hmm. in our minds. Um, This is the new film by Jason Reitman, written by Diablo Cody, starring Charlie Theron, Mackenzie Davis, and Ron Livingston, which, hey, I'm glad Ron Livingston's getting some yeah, getting some work. Totally. He was good in it, too. Yeah, so what did you think of the movie? Um, I thought it was good. I, there's, uh, aside from general thoughts, like we said, I don't know how much, it's hard to tell my opinion overall without talking about the end. But um, I thought the performances were really good. Charlie Saren's great. Um, yeah. It's funny. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's shot pretty standard, but, like, looks nice. Has a nice look, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought the editing was really cool. Yeah. There were some really, really nice uh, sequences. Um like I, there's the scene where they go to um they drive to the city and it's like them listening to an album over the course of driving and it's like cutting through all the songs that yeah. was really cool yeah i, I like that a true. lot and yeah. then i really liked the the montage of um after the baby's born like yeah. what that's like and how it like ramps up and just her like sitting there like exhausted with like breast pumps and like you know what i mean like I like how it played with that because it's sort of like a scene that we've seen in so many movies, mm-hmm. yet it, it did it in a very unique way. Yeah, it was really like, interesting. Yeah, I liked that a lot. Mm-hmm. And then incorporating like little things, like, because cause a lot of those montages are very like focused in on like choosing what's going to show, like have the most impact, like most consolidated amount of information, like... Yeah. in these certain clips that you see, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas this, it almost felt like, like, I don't think this is what they did, but it felt like it could have been, like, a whole hour of the movie, and they just, like, grabbed, like, the best shots from it. You know what I mean? It felt very natural yeah. and real because they weren't necessarily moments that you would focus on in something like that. Like, there were there were the ones of, like, yeah. that were repetitious and, like, twisting the, like, the diaper thing over and over again. But Which is a great, great edited uh, oh yeah uh, montage that whole thing where it just starts to speed up more and more and more totally become more routine that was really mm. well done yeah and there are really good moments in it that feel natural that um like almost feel like there's like a whole scene that like got cut out which is like not necessarily a bad thing if that yeah. makes sense kind of like it reminded me of like ladybird i felt like was like that too yeah like they had really totally. short clips that felt very natural that um it was a montage, you could throw but it didn't in. feel like one. Yeah, it felt like you're grabbing, like, like if someone had an amazing day, you're grabbing, like, not the most memorable part of that. You're grabbing, like, one section that maybe isn't the highlight. You know what I mean? But it's, like... Totally. Just totally. feels feels like real moments, which was really yeah. cool. Um, For sure. Yeah, I don't know. What, what what are your general thoughts? I've been yakking. Well, first, I, I want to hear, did, did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. You liked it? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I liked it too. I'm pretty much on par with you. Um, yeah, great editing. I thought, yeah, like you said, Charlize Theron, great. She did a great job. Mm. She really sold that role for me. Um, and uh, the the performances of the kids too. Like, it's amazing yeah. that they were able to get some of those incredibly emotional moments. And like these young kids, like, yeah, was shocking some of the time. Yeah, um, they were really good. I, I especially liked the daughter. Yeah, the daughter was great. 
And yeah, like when she's singing karaoke, really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> and um, it makes me terrified to have children. <laughs> oh, definitely. It seems <laughs> you know? like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, like the movie overall, it has it's it's a it's has some great funny moments, but it it has a darkness to it, mm-hmm. and it definitely is a little depressing and dark. Um, but it, you know, it makes you. It's it's a moment in people's lives that are very real, and I feel like it expresses that really well, you know. And it's yeah. it's it's a it's a moment in life where probably I, I'm I'm right there, like I'm almost there in my life. So mm-hmm. um, it's a little terrifying, <laughs> and, uh, but also very real. So I thought, yeah, I thought it was really thought it was really good. Nice. Yeah, I did think there were a few moments that feel a little written dialogue wise. Yeah, there are a few that's, things. That's the that, Al- like, that's Diablo Cody for you. Yeah, where you know? I was almost like reminded while watching, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess yeah, she yeah, I, for- I forgot she wrote this. <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, which is kind of a bummer because so much of it feels so natural and genuine that like sometimes when they bust out those like really writery lines it like breaks the illusion a little bit you know yeah totally totally um yeah there's a couple moments where i was like oh yeah this is the writer of juno makes sense yeah um but it, the acting is so do- like so well done that it, it does feel natural at the same time mm. i also liked um i kind of like the, the characters of mark duplass and i think <laughs> Whoever plays his wife, I don't remember her name. Is uh, it Elaine Tan? Um, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, they were uh, funny. Uh, it was just like a funny moment to have mm. that play out. But yeah, yeah I thought, it was. I, um, I thought they were good. Yeah, it was good. Um, let's go ahead. I guess moving into spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Last. Let's wrap it up. Final thoughts on non spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um. I pretty much said I, I I liked it. It's I think it's a pretty good movie, worth checking out. And um, I'm gr- I'm glad Ron Livingston's getting some work. Uh, <laughs> and you know I'm glad he's you know I am. <laughs> no, I it makes complete sense, but it's just a, a good like bullet point. It's like yeah, well to sum up everything. Glad Ron <laughs> Livingston's <laughs> he's in it. I'm glad he's there. Yeah. yeah. And Mackenzie Davis, she sort of. We'll get into it later, but she yeah. is sort of perfect for that kind of role, I think. Yeah, definitely. And how it's she was... set up, and like, she makes sense why they chose her for what her role is. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, Charlize Theron, man, fucking killing it all the time. Yeah, she's amazing. She's just an amazing actress. She really yeah, is. She's really you, good. You, you really feel her pain throughout the entire film. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Any last thoughts for you? Not really. Um, good flick. I would recommend it, but we'll get into yeah other stuff. I guess now, should we, right? Should we should we give our rating right now or later? No, later. I still don't know mine yet. Okay, <laughs> all right. So we are moving into spoilers for Tully, starting right now. Your twenties are great, but then your thirties come around the corner like a garbage truck at five a.m. Girls heal. No, we don't. We might look like we're all better, but if you look close, we're covered in concealer. You're convinced that you're this failure, but you actually made your biggest dream come true. If you want to run off or something, I get that, because I want to do that too sometimes, but I'm not gonna. I'm here to help you with everything. You can't fix the parts without treating the whole. Yeah. No one's treated my hole in a really long time. (laughs) (sighs) So I totally didn't see that ending at all. No, I didn't either. But once it happened, it's sort of like everything made sense. Yeah, I also, though, did you like the ending? Yeah, I did. I did, honestly, because you know what? It felt to me like it was very probably intentionally trying to make it seem like it was going to go into this forced lesbian romance mm-hmm. that 
they hint at, but it felt unnatural to me. Yeah. And really kind of unromantic to like make the movie go in that direction. Mm-hmm. And that's that's fine if they wanted to do that, but the way the movie was playing out, it didn't feel like it would have fit. And I like how it twisted that on me. And um, yeah. sort of like, oh, you know, uh, Tully was never actually there. And it was like, oh, everything makes sense now. Like, that's her younger self. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, uh, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. But it's also kind of, it's a sensitive subject too. So, cause it's like, I don't know. It's almost like taking advantage of mental illness in a way to like mm-hmm. have it. I don't know if it's like just there to like have a twist to have a twist. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of just like, oh, there's a twist. She was mentally handicapped. And it's like, it felt good in, while I was watching it, but in hindsight, it's sort of, I, there. there's some controversy about that, and some people are upset about it. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about this, but... Um, I actually, I haven't. Um, yeah, that, some people I, that feel like it's sense, a little though. exploitive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I, I'm sensitive to that, but I'm not, I don't really feel that way. To me, I felt like I liked where it went, and as a viewer, I enjoyed sort of like the surprise of that moment. And... Mm-hmm. Um, sort of looking back and noticing like oh this scene makes sense this scene makes sense and yeah i thought it was uh that was interesting what'd you think i didn't i didn't like that that there was a twist you didn't like it i just felt like like i i i don't think it's necessarily bad like i think the movie is still good and like will find an audience of people that will like it and like relate to that and everything but I don't know I just felt like for a while it felt like really natural and just kind of like simple like if they like if they would have just sat around and talked every night and the movie was just about like her being excited to talk to this person who reminds her of herself right and then she still has to come to terms with the same things but just through someone who's actually real I think I just would have liked that way more fair enough I just, like, wasn't expecting it, and I was like, what? Like, the, the reveal of the name, I was just like, wait, huh? Like, okay. Like, oh, yeah, uh, okay. Like, it just, yeah. it didn't, it didn't feel ne- necessary, I guess, for me. Yeah. But, like, I see why, I don't think it's invaluable. Like, I don't think, like, that yeah. it's not necessary. like, it's bad, or that, like, it didn't make its point by doing it. I just felt like it didn't need to do that to make its point. I totally see that point as well. I, you I know. see that. I, I don't feel like it needed it. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess, I don't know. I, It was sort of going in a direction. And it, it didn't have to go in the direction it was trying to like mislead me in. Like I feel yeah. like, like what you're saying, I'm agreeing with you. Like If it had sort of just like been them talking and just sort of like making it normal Mm -hmm. it would have been fine but it was like leading you like purposely misleading you into a direction and then it changed on you yeah and i guess i sort of liked the change result compared to like what it was trying to lead me into Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah 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 Yeah, because i would say it pretty much starts being weird when they like she puts on the thing and they have sex right yeah it's sort of yeah, because like, it's just really? like, well, this isn't a choice that this woman would make that easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it was just like way too easy. Because yeah. they didn't even decide it. She just was like, let's go upstairs. She's like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, just go with it. This is totally fine. Like, not to say and, that it's not fine, but it's also not something that these characters would like convincingly just, be that accepting of this soon. Exactly. You know what I mean? And Exactly. And it's sort of like, oh, you're watching it and... and I was like, oh, maybe she's just going to tease him and then walk out or whatever and then sort of yeah. set it up for Charlize, Charlize's mm-hmm. character to, like, have sex with them or whatever. But then yeah. it full on goes like, oh, there's, like, a threesome going on. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was like, that was too easy, you know? Yeah, yeah, and him just being like, oh, Literally okay. this woman he'd never met before. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, like, seems kind of weird that you're – Oh, both want to fuck me right now. <laughs> like, yeah, like and this night nanny who I've never met before, but she's dressed up 
like my fantasy so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah, yeah, the just... only thing i know about her is that my wife has said that she's weird <laughs> like, yeah you know exactly like literally that's yeah it. <laughs> it's just kind of strange and it also and just being woken up in bed and to have that sort mm-hmm. of like yeah so it makes sense later like how that played out but yeah so like in terms of the actuality of what happened we're to believe that she told everyone that the nanny was there but was not right not that she just stays up and no she told people that she had called the nanny but she hadn't yeah she actually was staying up and was just like literally going crazy because she was uh, yeah, exhausted exhaustion yeah. and just going getting out of her mind i just like, don't get how that like practically works in this movie once again not yeah. to get into too many like mechanics of you know the reality of this scenario but no, like yeah. the husband wouldn't like i get how it happens when he's gone but he doesn't notice that every night his wife never what does she come up to bend and leave and then come back is that like what we're supposed to think? And then That's also, Mark Duplass is like, "Oh, she called. Great." After like all this time, and it's like, "Oh, you haven't noticed that you're paying the bills for this person, or that you're not paying them." That's a good point. I haven't even thought about that. It's just kind of like a weird thing where, at the end, I was like, "Okay, so she wasn't real." But like, does did no of- one ever bring this up to her, or? We don't really that... know either how much time passed either. Yeah. That would really make a determining factor on that. Because it feels like it's been weeks. But yeah, but it, it could have only been like a week. Yeah, it could have been like a week. We don't know. Because they all, they're also vague about it when like... Because you'd think they come every night, right? But then... Yeah, totally. Like, she, oh, she thanks for that the other night. Like that was a big help. But like that was like just our... You know what I mean? That was like less yeah. than a day ago. So that right. feels weird to reference it like that. So it's like, are there nights that we're skipping? Or is this like... But I guess, no, I guess it goes... For a while, it's literally... For a while, because of the school back year. Back-to-back-to-back back back nights. Right? Huh? Because of the school year. Doesn't it imply right. that it's been a while? Because at the beginning, don't they say it's like... Beginning of April or something? Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, like the first time she has the meeting... Um, she says, like, oh, I'm, he's still adjusting to kindergarten or whatever, and they're like, well, it's April, implying that it's, like, been almost a year, so, like, he's not really adjusting. Mm. And then the school year ends, so it'd probably be, like, a month, right? Maybe, because, I don't know, because, I don't know, it makes it seem like it's pretty soon after. Because she goes up to apologize after the one bad encounter. Yeah, I'm talking the second encounter. She where, says, where like, it's like, almost near the end of the school year. So does that mean that, like, it's, like, right about to end and they're talking about next year? Because that would yeah, imply that it's been, like, probably. over a month during this mo- during the movie. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really get a sense of time. That yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But I guess it's intentionally like that because it's supposed to be your weird, you know. Yeah, maybe she's of, just... Yeah, she's kind of all screwed up with with her. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and then it started to get weird for me too. Like, they go off to the city, and like, all right, this is interesting. But it also kind of makes sense too in the story because she's sort of like letting go and sort of just like reconciling with her past and. Hmm. Um. Just like having a break, a quote unquote breakdown moment with this other character of like regretting her past and trying to figure out what she's doing with her life now. Like, I get it. Yeah. And then it just goes in a really weird direction right after that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess my general thing is like, I get it. But like, is that the best way to go about making this point? Yeah, because when you think about it, it was intentionally about a woman who has like severe, has a severe mental illness. Yeah. Who's a who's a mother of three, <laughs> and in that sense, it's like, I don't know. 
it's a little sensitive you mm-hmm. know it's weird it's a little weird but that being said i think there's still value in the movie and like For sure i loved the first hour i was like loving it i thought it was great yeah me too and then it just got a little just like I guess I just was not expecting it, like, at all. Like, 0% was expecting a twist ending out of this movie. You know yeah, what I, I mean? I, I didn't know how it ended at all. Um, didn't expect a twist. Yeah, I had no idea how it would end. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Clearly, we're, we're still processing the movie. Yeah. As we talk about it. It's yeah, definitely. Which is kind of cool, though, because we both have never, like, recorded an episode where we both seen the movie the same day. Yeah, totally. And it's also always... around the same time and just like mm-hmm. recorded it hours later. But um Yeah, so we're both clearly like processing it, but in the end I I still I I, I enjoyed the movie and I yeah. think it has some really it does have some good value and I think it's um definitely worth worth watching. Um it's just it's sort of like a it's sort of like the the twist like you said i don't know if it was necessary like if it was necessary like did it have to go in that direction did it have to be sort of about this almost becomes like a typical twist ending like yeah oh, like it was crazy so in the way it's never there structured the time, too yeah it's like coming know? back to the same shots and she's not there it's like yeah 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 i get it now <laughs> you know what i mean like right, right like it feels like it should have like the filter which like poof, and it's like all green you know and it's like showing like yeah. flashes of i don't know it just kind of just seemed very out of character for the movie yeah yeah i guess in the end i'm not like a huge fan of of that um <sighs> should we talk about rating Sure. Yeah, I guess think? so. What are you thinking? I'll give it a three. Yeah, I think I, I I'm like heavy three, light three and a half. Mm-hmm. I do think the right person will like it a lot, and I don't think it's bad. It's just like for me, I just like didn't need the end. Like didn't need it. Yeah. Thought the movie was more effective when it was just like really real feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean those they, moments with with like the kids and doing it's just like uh you feel you feel exhausted for it. Yeah, totally. And it like, and it's good. It's like not I mean it's not good. But like right, it's right. good that they can get that across so much, exactly. you know. It's that like, they you can get that feeling from it. That's that's what mm-hmm. makes a good movie. Yes. Yeah. Is, is feeling that way. And you totally feel that, and I mean, it's definitely well made, well produced, well directed. Mm-hmm. The script is just—I just don't like it. Like you said, I just not positive that it should have gone in that direction. Um, but I didn't necessarily dislike it while watching it. But I guess, like now that I'm thinking about it, it wasn't ne- it wasn't necessary. And I feel like I maybe would have liked the film more if it hadn't gone so dark and if it had been, mm-hmm. like, just more comedy and, like, based in that, in, in actual reality. Like, more yeah. based in reality and not making her just be crazy and just having her, like, sort of, like, be about herself and, like, healing in, like, a more natural way. Yeah, because, like, what if it's, if it's mental illness then like what are they then like what's it really saying at the end yeah yeah what's 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 the message from that that like just, that aspect the of kids it, make you know crazy I mean? yeah like yeah uh it's just kind of it kind of like muddies what it set up before totally but i did think the first however long was like really strong and all the performances are really good agreed and the editing's really good yeah, the editing's cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we pretty much agree. Um, and the kids, yeah, the kids are great, too. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, I liked just, like, some of the the written moments, too, of, like, the sort of real-life moments that we all kind of deal with, like, 
just like the woman at the coffee shop just like yeah. judging her for oh like, yeah it's hysterical that and like the rich couple who has it just like so good and so easy mm-hmm. compared yeah, to her it's like, like tiki hut thing in the <laughs> yeah it's funny he's like made a tiki bar <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty good the kids yeah. are, their kids are like eating like truffle mac and cheese yeah so just like <laughs> oh god yeah it's funny it's um there's a lot of really good moments in it and it and it's funny it's just a bummer when like it ends and it feels like it's supposed to be like a positive thing and it just is i i just was kind of sitting there like what <laughs> like, it's, it's sort of just i like, felt like yeah. it was kind of my like, what's your in the end well, because because here. we've seen so kind of just like the way i felt leaving kind of like muddied what had come before yeah and it's sort of like because we know the ending what really is the message you know what really is the message from that yeah that that you should <laughs> get some sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like, it's you like have some help when you need it like i it's just sort of muddy. Mm-hmm. And it very, it had, like, a message before. And, yeah, I just feel like it would have been more beneficial if it didn't... It's almost like a cop-out. Kind of. Of the result. It's sort of like, how do we have her deal with her problems and, like, sort of reconcile with her past and where she is now in her life? Oh, we just... She's crazy. She imagined this person the whole time who was helping her. Mm-hmm. It's sort of just like... I don't know. It's sort of it could be done better. Yeah. I just didn't think it needed a twist to get those points across. And then right, the twist brings saying. in yeah, it brings in the whole mental illness thing and it's like, well, what does that have to say about what's going on? It like that? it just literally brings in a whole other like thing to think about, like a whole other topic right into the other messages and it's sort of like, well, that wasn't really what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I'm going to rest on a three. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm going to rest on a three for that. Three stars. Noise, noise. All right. That's going to conclude our review of Tully and this episode. As always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. Every rating brings us to more listeners. You can email us at listen to us randaboutmovies at gmail.com. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Sean Pierce, and our Patreon supporters. You too can be a su- you too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as one dollar. Visit www.patreon.com slash L T U R A M podcast. And that's it. Next episode we're gonna be reviewing Deadpool 2 and Solo. We're gonna do a double review, so our review of Deadpool will come out a little later to accommodate solo the Star Lord. Wars story. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, yeah. All right, man. Good talk. Yeah, good chat, man. All right. Take it easy. Take her easy.